Hidden deep within the Earth's crust lies tellurium, a metal eight times rarer than gold, and yet far more valuable for our future. Its name comes from the Latin word for Earth, though there's less of it here than almost anywhere else in the universe. In a whole ton of soil, you'd find only a few microscopic traces. Today tellurium is obtained when copper electroplating produces byproducts in the form of tellurize of precious metals, which later on are reduced to metallic tellurium. For centuries, tellurium was little more than a scientific curiosity, known mostly for causing a faint garlic-like smell on contact. But today, that forgotten element has become vital. The US government now lists tellurium as one of the most critical minerals for national security and the clean energy economy. It's a key component in high efficiency solar panels and advanced renewable technologies. Once overlooked and almost lost to history, tellurium is now the rare element powering a cleaner, brighter and more sustainable world. Tellurium is a metalloid, an element that's part metal and part non-metal. It sits in that grey area between metals like aluminum and non-metals like carbon. That unique balance gives it special electrical and chemical traits, and those traits have made tellurium suddenly essential for green technology. For years, it was just a curiosity used in small amounts for ceramics, glass colouring and alloys. Today, it's at the centre of one of the most important clean energy revolutions in the world. The rise of thin film solar panels made from cadmium telluride, or CDTE. Cadmium telluride panels are efficient, stable and quick to make. They convert sunlight to electricity faster than traditional silicon panels and lose far less power in high temperatures. They're durable, resistant to weather and maintain strong performance over decades. Each panel can be produced in under five hours, generating six times less carbon dioxide than a silicon module. Even better, over 90% of the materials can be recycled when they reach the end of their life. All this makes CDTE panels the most promising solar technology for large-scale clean power. It's no wonder the global market for thin film solar cells is expected to surpass $10 billion by 2027, more than double the size it was in 2021. But there's a catch. Tellurium is rare, so rare that it rivals platinum in scarcity. The average rock contains just about three parts per billion of it. Oddly, the element is more abundant in outer space than it is here on Earth. During our planet's early formation, most tellurium escaped into the solar nebula as a gas, leaving Earth almost empty-handed. Today, known reserves are estimated at around 24,000 tonnes, found mostly in the United States, Peru, Canada, Japan and Russia. Yet there are almost no tellurium-only mines. The metal is extracted as a byproduct of copper refining, recovered from waste materials called anode slimes. Because of that, the global tellurium supply depends directly on copper mining. When copper production slows, tellurium availability drops and prices climb. According to the US Geological Survey, roughly 90% of all tellurium resources come from copper ores. That tight link between the two metals has made copper even more valuable, not just for wiring and electronics, but for renewable energy too. Copper connects solar panels, power inverters and transmission systems, while tellurium forms the panels themselves. Together, they make up the foundation of modern clean energy infrastructure. It's a perfect partnership, but also a vulnerability, because if copper output falters, so does tellurium production. That's why most tellurium still comes from one place, China. In 2023, China produced about two-thirds of the world's supply, around 500 tonnes. Japan followed with about 68 tonnes, and Russia came next with roughly 40. China's dominance comes from decades of industrial investment. It built an entire system to mine, refine, and export critical elements, and tellurium became part of that machine. But heavy dependence on a single country is risky. In 2019 and 2021, 95% of all tellurium used in the United States came from China. With China controlling nearly 75% of the global supply chain, a trade conflict could cripple Western solar production overnight. So the US decided to act. In 2020, it still relied on imports for 75% of its tellurium. By 2023, that number had dropped to only 25%. The turnaround came from a century-old copper mine in Utah, Kennecott. Located near Salt Lake City, the Bingham Canyon mine, 
Operated by Rio Tinto, is the largest man-made excavation in the world, over 3,900 feet deep and 2.5 miles wide. Since 1903, it has produced more copper than any other mine on Earth, over 17 million tons. In 2022, Rio Tinto began extracting tellurium from Kennecott's copper byproducts, building a new domestic supply chain that would strengthen the nation's energy independence. The plan was simple, but groundbreaking. Produce tellurium in Utah, refine it in North America through 5N+, and deliver it to First Solar, the US leader in thin film panels. When fully scaled, Kennecott will produce about 20 tons of tellurium per year, worth around $3 million, but that's enough to make America the sixth largest producer worldwide. Considering global production was only 580 tons in 2021, those 20 tons make a real difference. The move also keeps more of the clean energy value chain inside the country, instead of relying on foreign refineries. Meanwhile, other potential sources are being explored. Some gold and silver districts in Colorado, California, and Alaska contain telluride minerals rich in this element. At the Klondike site in Colorado, rock samples showed up to 3.3% tellurium alongside small amounts of gold and silver. But recovering it efficiently requires different equipment and new chemical processes. Gold mills aren't built for tellurium, so extraction remains costly and limited. For now, copper mines remain the best and cheapest source. The economic impact of tellurium is already enormous. A recent study commissioned by First Solar found that by 2026, domestic CDTE solar manufacturing could add over $10 billion to the US economy and create 30,000 jobs, generating nearly $3 billion in wages. The Department of Energy has invested another $20 million into research to improve CDTE cell designs, extend their lifespans, and reduce production costs. Scientists are developing new mini-modules and prototypes aimed at cutting emissions even further and increasing efficiency beyond 22%. Academic labs are testing ways to make CDTE panels lighter, cheaper, and more adaptable to curved or flexible surfaces. Outside the US, Canada's Deerhorn project in British Columbia is also advancing. It has already expanded its known mineral zone by several miles and is positioning itself as a major North American supplier. In 2022, two pounds of tellurium cost about $70. By 2023, it was 80. Prices will likely keep climbing as more countries install solar capacity. For miners, that trend means strong profit margins and new exploration incentives. The timing couldn't be better. In the first quarter of 2024, the United States added a record 11 gigawatts of new solar capacity, the largest quarterly increase in its history. By mid-2024, domestic solar manufacturing capacity exceeded 26 gigawatts per year, and the country added over 40 gigawatts in 2023 alone. Solar accounted for 64% of all new electricity generation additions, producing enough power for 37 million homes. Texas and Florida led growth, while California slowed due to regulatory shifts. Even with supply chain challenges, total capacity is expected to reach 438 gigawatts by 2029, and that number could rise even more as domestic tellurium production expands. Efficiency records tell the same story. When cadmium telluride solar technology was introduced in 1972, efficiency was just 6%. By 2016, US researchers achieved two 2.1% 2 comma, proving thin film panels could match or outperform silicon ones. CDTE modules also generate more real-world energy per rated watt because they perform better in heat and low light. The production process is faster, uses less energy, and doesn't depend on imported silicon, giving the US a chance to build a fully independent clean energy industry from the ground up. Yet the tellurium race is not just about economics, it's about national security. When one country controls most of a vital resource, others become dependent. China's dominance makes the West vulnerable, but with projects like Kennecott and Deerhorn, that balance is slowly changing.
North America is projected to account for 38% of global tellurium market growth between 2024 and 2028, narrowing China's lead and stabilizing global supply chains. Tellurium's journey from copper refining waste to critical clean energy metal is a perfect symbol of modern innovation. It shows how even the rarest elements can reshape global industries when science and necessity align. Each new panel built from cadmium telluride brings us closer to a sustainable energy future. And it all starts with a trace element so rare that most of it drifted into space billions of years ago. Today, that same element is helping humanity reclaim a piece of the sun. In the end, tellurium is proof that small things can have massive power. It connects the Earth's deepest minds to the endless energy above us. It fuels the fastest growing renewable technology on the planet and strengthens economies that embrace it. As solar fields spread across rooftops, deserts, and oceans, the quiet work of this tiny metalloid will keep shining. It may be rare in the ground, but its impact is everywhere. And in the race for clean energy, tellurium might just be the rarest key to a brighter, greener world.